हेलो फ्रेंड्स इन टूडेज वीडियो वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट चंद्रगुप्ता सेकेंड सक्सेसर एंड हिज सन कुमार गुप्ता हु रूल्ड फ्रॉम 415 एडी टू 455 एडी he had met peacock his symbol now the thing to be noted here is that lord kartikeya is also addressed by the name of kumar and his symbol is peacock so somewhere kumar gupta was either inspired by lord kartikeya or wanted to portray him now let's talk about his territorial extent that is let's see how far the gupta empire was spread during his time in the previous video we had seen the territorial extent of chandragupta the second so when kumar gupta became the ruler in 415 ad the territorial extent of the gupta empire was exactly the same as it was at the time of chandragupta the second and it can be said that he kept this territorial extent completely intact during his rule that is neither any new territory was added nor any existing territory was lost but yes it is sure that towards the end of his rule a branch of horns from central asia had definitely tried to invade india by crossing the hindu kush mountains but the horns could not succeed in this attempt and ultimately the gupta empire remained completely intact during the rule of kumar gupta however the horns did not give up and again tried to invade india and these attempts happened after the end of kumar gupta's rule which means in the coming videos you will see hun in action for now this much introduction of them is enough so as we said that during the rule of kumar gupta gupta empire remained intact he did not fight many battles nor did he spent on all these things that is why there was a lot of peace and prosperity in the gupta empire during the rule of kumar gupta in fact during kumar gupta's rule that is from 415 ad to 455 ad the main focus of kumar gupta in these 40 years was not territorial extent but art and culture and that is why during his rule gupta empire had touched new heights of art and culture his inscriptions are found throughout the gupta empire for example you can quote udaygiri inscriptions mathura inscriptions gadhwa inscriptions and karam dand stone inscriptions although we do not need to know the details of these inscriptions because in these inscriptions we generally get to see things like which caves did kumar gupta first give to buddhist during his rule how many such people were there in his administration who were in his service for many generations which temples did he get built to whom did he grant land and what did he donate to people so we will not go into the details of all these things now let's talk about the most important contributions of kumar gupta he did three main things during his rule Firstly he led the foundation of Nalanda University which emerged as an educational institution whose reputation was spread not only in India but also in other countries apart from this he issued many gold coins as well as silver coins and like the rest of the gupta rulers he also performed ashwamedha yagya and in one coin he also met the motif of the horse of ashwamedha yagya here the thing which we should cover in more detail is nalanda university Nalanda means giver of knowledge and it used to be a Buddhist monastery which ultimately became Mahayan University in which many religious and general subjects were taught if we talk about religious subjects then not only Mahayan doctrine but also Hinayan doctrine Samkhya philosophy Vedas yoga and many other religious subjects were also taught here apart from this in general subjects logic grammar astronomy medicine and many other general subjects were also taught the medium of education in this university used to be sanskrit and there was more emphasis on discussions than lectures to get admission in this university students had to give an entrance exam which was considered to be a tough exam and only 30% people could clear this exam students used to come here from every corner of india and at the same time students from outside india especially from eastern countries students used to come to study here chinese traveler hyun shang has told in his records that about 3000 students used to study in this university and it was a residential educational institution where boarding lodging and education all three used to be free for the students
but it is obvious that it was free for the students but someone or the other must have been bearing these expenses so it has been said about this that there were 100 to 200 villages from which the revenue generated was completely available to this buddhist monastery which had now become nalanda university now the question arises that why these 100 to 200 villages were giving their revenue so the simple answer to this is that the ruler of that time kumar gupta had patronized nalanda university and he himself had decided that which 100 to 200 villages would be there whose revenue he would divert to nalanda university without taking it himself and this practice continued even further because the successors of kumar gupta also patronized this university and nalanda university continued to receive this revenue after this palas of harsha bengal and bihar also patronized nalanda university and it was ensured that whatever funds nalanda university needs it should continue to get them now let's talk about the professors of nalanda university who were called panditas and some famous professors among them were dharmpal silabhadra sthirmati and din ganga Dharmpal basically used to belong to Kanchipuram and he had joined Nalanda University as a professor but later he became the head of Nalanda University so these were the details about Kumar Gupta's rule to understand indian history and indian polity in detail do follow bookstava playlist link is given in the description box thank you for watching bookstava